To understand the definition process of quality indicators, we need to know some concepts first, like performance indicators. Talking about performance indicators is foremost talking about three fundamental concepts. Firstly, the performance measurement, which represents the process of quantification of performance. Basically, it represents the definition of what should be measured, who should measure, how to measure, and when should this performance be measured. Secondly, the measure of performance, which represents the indicator used to quantify the performance. Continuing with the previous example, the example from our last video, reducing dropout rates through policies for the integration of new students, particularly of first-year students cutting the rate in 10% in the next three years, it would be the dropout rates. And finally, the performance metric, which represents the concept and the components of the performance measure. For example, the percentage of students who are signed, to, uh, signed up and have not completed, who are not enrolled. The use of performance indicators has numerous advantages. It eliminates the subjectivity, because everyone knows what we refer to. When you talk, uh, for example, about drop, uh, drop, uh, dropout rates, reinforce the commitment as it focuses its efforts on that objective, identifies ambition, in particular by setting the targets to be achieved, promotes continuous improvement as it requires monitoring, last but not least, it promotes innovation as it is the driving force of concrete actions that improve these indicators. As you have seen, the performance measurement that is the process that underlies the performance output is the first relevant issue. It essentially goes through four phases. First phase, the design where we try to understand what we want to measure and how it should be measured. Second phase, the plan and build, where we seek to build the indicator system to plan the access to the information and to configure the data handling. Third phase, the implement and operate, where management is expected to be used as a mechanism to support the decision making. And finally, the last phase, the refresh stage, where we seek to review and re redefine the system of indicators, ensuring that the measure of performance remains relevant for the organization. Finally, in order to have a consistent process of defining indicators, we need to distinguish well between target and indicator. What do we need to know about the target, the goal? It represents the objective that is intended to be achieved. For example, the reduction of dropout rates. It also represents the ambition, for example, a reduction of 10%. To set the target in a proper way, it is necessary to understand the history of the objective. On the other hand, we have the indicator. It represents the way of measuring the objective. For example, measuring the dropout rates through the non-conclusion. It also represents the measurement of the indicator. For example, as seen previously, the percentage of students that have not concluded. For a proper indicator measuring, it is essential to know the sources of information. In this, we will talk about documentation and monitoring of indicators. When we move on the actual phase of monitoring the performance indicators and of creating a system of indicators, there are three major difficulties. First, we need to set the goals correctly so that they are not too much different from the reality. We also must take into account the multiplicity of objectives that can give rise to many indicators and an increasingly difficulty in keeping the system up to date. And finally, the relationship between quantitative and qualitative objectives 
the latter ones more difficult to measure and to monitor. In addition to these mentioned difficulties, it is necessary to bear into mind the criteria evaluation that we intend to measure. <clears throat> if we are more focused on results, we will have the indicators of effectiveness, those that the measure expected results. For example, achieving 10% of reduction in dropout rates. If we are more focused on resources, we should apply the efficiency indicators. This type of indicators measure the resources used to achieve the, the results. That is to say, do more with the same resources or do the same with fewer resources. For example, we can think uh, about the relationship between the reduction of the dropout rate and the, the resources used to control it. Let's see some examples of effectiveness indicators of accomplishment, which means the activity performed in a certain time period, for example, the number of students in training, of results, which implies direct and immediate effects on the target population of the actions, for example, percentage of students who have successfully completed the program, of impacts, meaning the consequence of the actions that go beyond the direct beneficiaries, for example, the number of companies benefiting from graduates' placement. Let's also look at some examples of efficiency indicators of productivity, which mean ratios that combine resources indicators with indicators of achievement, of results or of impact. For example, number of training hours per student who have completed the program. Standard costs, which means theoretical costs as a facilitating element for objectification of the action. For instance, costs per hour or training taught. Quality, which means take into account the expressed satisfaction or in the way of respecting predefined procedures. For example, the student satisfaction level. We should also mention that there are several types of indicators. The simple ones, for example, the number of students who have dropped out. The resultant ones, for instance, average rates of students who did not complete the training. The multiple ones, as an example, we might have rates of students dropping out in the first years of training. Moving on to the importance of information systems for decision based on facts. Let's now take the opportunity to talk a little bit about the importance of data and establishing good indicators that will help to improve the decision making process. Here are some statements that help us to understand this importance. According to Wilson, measuring performance simultaneously as a art and a science. Continuing with Wilson, the behaviors they inspire are more valuable than the measure itself. However, if poorly implemented, the performance measures can cause more damage than benefits. Jordan also addressed the subject, saying Cho chosen indicators represent the formulation of management contracts between hierarchical levels. That is why partners need to agree on common indicators. For instance, on the basis that will be used to assess the degree of compliance with their management contract. It should also be noted the need to create a good balance between two additional aspects. On the one hand, there is a limited ability for users to process information, so one should bear in mind that too many indicators lead to inefficiency, but very few will not allow us to get a clear picture of what we need to measure. On the other hand, there is a need to broaden the field of analysis to enrich it by not focusing too much on one or two indicators. 
The quickness, that is the calculation of the indicator directly from the information system. The occurrence, namely the calculation, must be done before the decision-making process. The constancy, particularly, always use the same sources of information over time.